happening right now in Blacksburg. The community is coming together to remember 13-year-old Nicole Lovell. Family and friends are paying their respects at McCoy Funeral Home. This, as court documents reveal new information about the case, lawyers for Natalie Keepers, one of the Virginia Tech students police say was involved in her stabbing death, filed paperwork to request bond. A hearing has been set for 11 tomorrow morning. Keepers is charged with accessory before the fact to first degree murder, accessory after the fact, and improper disposal of a body. David Eisenhower is charged with first degree murder. Both are being held in the New River, New River Valley Regional jail without bond tonight. WSLS 10's Don Jeffries joins us now in the studio. So Don, police have not connected the three via social media, but the case, of course, has sparked a conversation about online safety. It certainly has, Lindsay. There's been a lot of talk about the role social media may have played in this case. And to be clear, police have not said anything to that effect, only that Nicole Lovell and David Eisenhower knew each other before her death. But this case has gotten people talking about social media safety and has moms across our area taking action. Sharice Greer and Natasha Rogers are moms on a mission. So I went in out of parental curiosity and I was immediately shocked by what I saw. The two came across reports of social media sites for teens following the death of 13-year-old Nicole Lovell. They were disgusted by what they saw and drawn to do something about it including tracking down the parents of the users to let them know. I expected a whole bunch of stay out of our business, it's none of your business, but I was inundated with thank yous. Sergeant Steve Anders with the Bedford County Sheriff's Office Southern Virginia Crimes Against Children Task Force warns any form of social media has danger or risk. Anyone can create a group or page or be on multiple sites and pretend to be anyone. You have to make it known. Parents, talk about it. Parents like these and investigators like Anders say parents have to be proactive, but also know even with filters and parental controls, nothing is foolproof. She posts that she's 15. Charisse and Natasha weren't the only ones reporting Facebook pages like teen dating and flirting to have it brought down, but users caught on and were on the move to a new page. Anders says it's like opening your front door to allow predators in. 20 years ago, predators had to search for their victims. They had to get in the cars, go to the parks, go to the malls, integrate themselves into families. But technology, the double-edged sword that it is, has allowed victims to just walk right into the predator's hands. Sergeant Anders says if you give your child a device, look up parental controls on whatever device you give your child and know its features and how to control them. It's important, he says, to tell your kids you're not invading their privacy, but be direct. Tell them it's your job to protect them and make sure they're safe. In the studio, Don Jeffries, WSLS 10.